partly to blame, but it's also climate change. As our seas are changing temperature, it means that our fish are breeding in different ways and there just aren't enough fish for the seabirds. And that's something we're looking at, climate change, to see how it is affecting our wildlife. I mean, this morning, Chris, it was minus two here, so mm -hmm. it was pretty chilly, but generally it's been a mild winter. And we said at the beginning of the series that New Year's Eve and New Year's Day were the warmest on record in London got to 16 degrees and just below that in the highlands. So our winters are changing, but how is that affecting our British wildlife? Well, it is affecting it. It's affecting it in our lifetimes and we are noticing it, no doubt. Um, one of the species that we look at and frequently notice, because it's a harbinger of spring and we look out for it every year, are frogs spawning. Uh, Tim Jones, who's in Cornwall, sent us this photograph. He took it on the 11th of January. His pond is filled full of frog spawn. And he said that when he first moved for that house, he'd never see spawn until February. Well, I've got to say that we were out and about. Our camera operators were out and about in November. And they saw this on the 15th of November. Again, down in the West Country. Frogs spawning. And what we notice now is that in this part of the country, this is regular at the end of November and throughout December. Of course, it's perilous because if we then do get any freezing weather and there's any spawn floating on the surface, it will freeze and there's a high egg mortality. But if it hatches, the tadpoles can swim down beneath the surface and take refuge at the bottom of the pond. So what's it all about other than spawning earlier because it's warmer and wetter? Well, there is a chance, of course, that those tadpoles, if they don't die, will mature earlier in the summer, will go in to the autumn with bigger uh, fat reserves to get through that winter period and as a consequence of that a better survivability. It could also be that the male frogs are moving to the pond earlier and that any females that turn up late well at what was typical time have missed the best opportunity. So it's a definite change in policy that we've seen from our frogs. It really is isn't it? That's the amphibians. What about the reptiles? I mean snakes like adders you'd expect to be dormant in the winter but in fact we're seeing them out and about and this was seen in Cornwall on January the 2nd. Now it's not completely unusual to see adders out on a, on a lovely day basking in the sunshine but we're seeing it more and more and that's where there could be a problem. Now if you think about it when a snake goes into hibernation it's going to build up its fat reserves it's then dormant so it's inactive it's not using energy so when it comes out in the spring ready to start breeding it's fit and it's in good condition and adders do this amazing elaborate dance where they compete with males to get the attention of a female and as I say they need to be fit and healthy to do that if they keep coming out on warm days and using up that fat reserve then they're not going to be fit and healthy and that could affect their success in breeding and adders are not having a good time their numbers are declining so that that could be disastrous. I've, I've got a calendar. Are you going to show your calendar? Yeah. Yeah, because look, I mean, this is this is with the with the adders. That's when they should be dormant, and this is when we're seeing them in January. Yeah, indeed. I'm going back to here. The fog spawn. We can see here. There's a change. We typically see them between, as I said, January and March. I mean, again, I hate to say it. When I was a kid, 50 years ago, we would never go looking for fog spawn near, near Southampton, where I grew up, until March. Never. Would never be any there. But